Hey guys, uh, today I wanted to do a video on setting the phase on your subwoofer and which settings to use, you know, whether you've got zero or 180 degree phase. Uh, and I'm going to point out that the discussion of phase gets a lot more complicated than what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, but I'm going to try and get it to where it makes sense to people uh, what your phase setting should be and why. Uh, as, as easily as I can, because there's some stuff that even throws me from time to time. But uh, the idea is that, okay, so let's pretend that these are both subwoofer drivers, okay? And let's say they're both facing the same direction, all right? Both getting the same signal, same frequency. And so when the explosion happens or whatever, the subs move like this. They're both at zero degree phase, okay? So that's zero on both subs. Now, let's say you set this sub at zero and this sub at 180 degrees, all right? Instead of both moving, moving like this in unison, they're gonna go opposite each other, okay? So that's a 180 degree phase. You know, it's doing a 180, it's going the other direction, okay? So that's essentially what you're doing in a very simplistic way to, to describe it. Uh, there have been a few videos. Uh, I saw a guy that had a, two subwoofers sitting on the ground and both going like this and showing what phase is all about. Uh, but of course it gets more complicated than that. But I'm not gonna try and make it much more complicated. Um, I just wanna give you that kind of real simplistic view there. Uh, but you know, it, it, some subs have uh, switches that say zero and 180 degrees. Some subs have variable dials to where you can set one sub at zero and one at like 25 degrees if you want or whatever infinitely number of, of variable uh, settings. And so, you know, you've got those two different types. And, you know, the whole reason you adjust anything on your equipment is to get your sound better, right? That's the whole idea. And so, uh, another important thing to understand is the relationship of distance settings and timing. And again, this can get more complicated than what I'm saying, but I'm gonna try and describe it in a simple way to understand. So say you've got a speaker that's two feet away from your face, which isn't optimal, okay? And you got another speaker that's 20 feet away, which again is not optimal. But I, I've, you know, explaining things in extremes tends to help me. So, um, all right, so this speaker is, is two feet away from your face, all right? If you put that into the amplifier, what's gonna happen is the amplifier is gonna say, okay, this speaker should be the last speaker to get the signal. We're gonna send the signal to the speaker that's 20 feet away first, so that by the time it gets to you, then we'll release this signal so that they'll get to you at the same time. It's basically the amplifier's way of accounting for the speed of sound. Uh, you know, as you've, I don't know if you've ever watched someone play basketball uh, from across a field. You see them bouncing the ball, and when the ball hits the ground, the, the sound doesn't match. It, they bounce the ball and then you hear it and then they bounce the ball and then you hear it. So it's that speed of sound that you're dealing with, it's that delay. And so what the amplifier does is instead of saying, okay, what millisecond delay would you like for each channel? I mean, honestly, I'd scratch my head on that one. I, I wouldn't know what to do, I'd be confused. <laughs> I mean, I could probably figure it out, but it's a lot easier to say, okay, how far away is that speaker from your head? Measure it and that speaker, and that speaker. And of course, room correction does all this for you. So it'll say, okay, this speaker's this far away, that speaker's that far away. And you know, it does it by actually measuring it. So it can measure using the, the calculations for the speed of sound to say, okay, that speaker's obviously 10 feet away, and that one's nine and a half feet away, and that one's, you know. So it goes through and measures it, sets everything up for you, and everything's good. Uh, and it works, the, it's, it's very reliable. Um, the one exception is if you measure one spot here and then way across the room, it's not gonna be as reliable because it's gonna be getting mixed signals, and I've talked about that in a previous video. But uh, in the end, well, I should go back. Okay, so we've got this scenario again where we've got speaker, you know, this speaker and this speaker are both at zero phase, so they're moving the same. If you add delay, or speed up delay, however, you change the timing of the speaker, you can actually make it act as though one speaker is 180 degree phase, okay? So that's where I'm going with this, is that the easiest way to do it 
is to set your subwoofers at zero degrees phase. Never touch them. I honestly never touch phase. Uh, I never mess with it. I do all my adjust adjustments using the distance settings, which, you know, if you've got a, a, a subwoofer that just has a 180 degree switch, that doesn't leave you a lot of adjustability. Uh, if you've got a subwoofer that has variable phase, it gives you more adjustability, but it's still not quite, I mean, you, it's, it's better, but it's still not quite as good as just using the distance settings alone. And so I always talk about uh, adding four feet to the distance um, after room correction. So what I mean by that is I'll set, uh, say these subwoofers uh, measure at 11.7. All right, so I'll take these, uh, that number and I'll add four feet and make it 15.7. And I've done this, I've measured it, and you can see the graph results uh, on the, the Facebook page. And I got rid of a lot of dead spots, a lot of nulls uh, by doing that, a lot of cancellations. And I also found that you can't overdo it, which I, you know, I've, I've tried it before, but I actually did it in my video, it was kind of embarrassing, but, uh, I added seven feet, and even though the graph looked great, it didn't sound very good to me. And so that's another point is always trust your ears above all else, above my advice, uh, your, your Odyssey settings, always trust your ears. Uh, so, but for me, I've always found that adding four feet of distance to the subwoofers always seems to give me the best response. And so what I'm doing is I'm tricking the AVR. I'm saying, okay, you measured it at 11.7, but I'm telling you that I moved them four feet back. And by adding, by moving them four feet back, the amplifier says, okay, well, we gotta get that signal out to the subwoofer, you know, like three or four milliseconds sooner. So, and what that does for me is it sends, ten, tends to populate the room a little bit more. Uh, you know, I get fewer cancellations with it. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and so, but that's what's happening is I'm, I'm telling the amplifier that I've pushed the subwoofers back. So it makes the adjustments and then I haven't pushed them back. It just gets that signal out just a little bit sooner. And it just, that's the, where I've had the best response. That's where I've had the best results on a graph. I mean, I, I can get a little bit better, but don't like the sound as much. So that's really something you guys want to tinker with. But as far as setting phase, I never mess with the phase settings. I mean, I have in the past, and I probably could again, but it's just so much easier to use the distance settings. Uh, so, and uh, another couple of things that I wanna point out about the, the timing and things like that. Any subwoofer that I recommend is going to have a DSP in it, or a digital signal processor. Hey, Bear Bear. Um, and a digital signal processor will slightly delay the sound. So, um, you know, an SVS subwoofer will measure as though it's further away than if you actually take your tape measure out and measure it. So that's one of those things. So if you ever see your subwoofer, you know it's 10 feet away, but it says 12 feet, not a big deal. Um, it, it's, it's okay, <laughs> things are normal. Um, but, and I, and I, I wanna point out too, um, SVS, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm the world's first SVS affiliate. And a long time ago, they committed to me to doing, uh, you know, troubleshooting and, and tech support for my audience. And it doesn't matter whether you have anything of theirs or not. If you guys have questions about your Blu-ray player, if you have questions about your amplifier, neither of which SVS makes, uh, they'll still help you with it. Even if you don't have a, a speaker or a subwoofer of theirs, they're just glad to engage you. Um, I think what it does is it gives them the opportunity to show that they know their stuff. They, they have the chops and they're very knowledgeable. A lot of my information uh, has been learned in, in discussing things with SVS. Um, you know, Ed Mullen over there is, is just amazing. So, uh, you know, you guys can call them. You can, you can use the uh, chat feature email. Uh, and, and the reason I mention this is because I can be kind of slow when it comes to responding to comments. And I don't mean to, it's just, um, you know, I, I, I just can't get to it all the time. So if you guys have a pressing issue, uh, you can get in touch with them. Again, it doesn't matter if you have their equipment or not. Uh, it doesn't even matter if you're going to be a customer of theirs in the future. They're still willing to help you out. So uh, you guys can check them out. Um, They've been very support, supportive of this channel. And 
uh, like I said, a lot of the stuff that I've learned has come directly from SVS, and I'm grateful for it. It's really helped make this channel, I, I think, more useful to people. And so, um, you know, I, I can't say how much I appreciate them. It's been fantastic for me personally. So, um, but anyway, that's my thing on phase. Um, phase can get to be a much more complicated topic. And, you know, if you guys have more feedback on that, more input, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Uh, but for me, just the simplest answer is set it all to zero and then use your amplifier. Um, and on top of that, too, there's some people that have found that uh, instead of running both subwoofer outputs on their amplifier, that instead by taking a splitter and running it from one, one subwoofer output uh, to both subs, that they, uh, they rerun room correction and they actually get better results. Um, I don't disagree with that. Uh, one of the things I always do is say this subwoofer measures at 11.7 and that subwoofer measures at 10.5 or 11.0 or whatever. I'll set them both to the same distance. Uh, I have this theory that I want the base signal to be exactly the same, uh, coming from the exact same type of subwoofer, and I, I don't, I'm on the exact same timing, everything. There's a lot of people that say, well, you should have this subwoofer timed a lot differently than that one to get the sound you want. I, I just haven't had that experience. Um, you know, Maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's a setting that I just haven't found yet that's just amazing, but uh, I just find that having everything being completely the same is, is the way to go. The one difference being uh, with gain, uh, with this subwoofer I set it at negative 13 and that one at negative 17. This subwoofer has more of a uh, you know, corner gain effect where this subwoofer doesn't. So this one I have to turn up a little bit to get the same output as that. That's the one situation where I don't run everything exactly the same, but everything else as far as distance and, and all that other stuff, I like to keep them identical. Um, so anyway, guys, I know I kind of got off on a tangent there, but that's my thing on phase settings, where I set them at. I never mess with uh, phase. I did for a little while. I, I tried adjusting. Uh, when I first got dual subs, I'm like, okay, I'll set this one at zero and that one at 90, or this one at 24 and that one at 122. I just tried all kinds of different things. I got some better looking graphs, but I didn't like the way they sounded at the end. So always trust your ears above all else, above my advice and anything else. Uh, so anyway, guys, that's my uh, video for today. Let me know if you have any feedback, um, any questions. Uh, again, stay tuned. I've got some exciting stuff coming up, and please subscribe.